pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, that feels pretty good. <laughs> what were the days, uh, you know, after it all? You know, you come back, the parade, you guys kind of had a couple things there. Where when you finally, is there a moment that you sat down and, and just kind of exhaled and, and realized what had just happened over the last few months? Yeah, I, I think those couple of weeks after the parade, probably about, for me, it was probably about a week where, uh, you know, my, my body and, and mind were, were pretty physically and mentally exhausted and, uh, you know, just kind of sitting uh, around my family talking about what transpired during the season and then, you know, when I was by myself just thinking about some of the things that we did throughout the playoffs and, uh, you know, I, I still get pretty, uh, pretty excited about what we were able to do in, in, in that postseason against three really, really good teams and, and everybody in our ball club contributed and it was... Uh, it was, a, it was an incredible, magical run, and um, you know, al although it's 2019 now, and, and we're ready to turn the page and hopefully do it again, you want to uh, cherish those moments, and, and those are, that's you know, that's the ultimate pinnacle. It's what you play for. So, uh, you know, I took that time. Definitely uh, needed some some physical rest and, and feeling good now. So. We, we got time for that turn the page stuff, all right? We're still in celebration mode here. We're going to carry it right through a Patriots duck boat parade. You know, just one rolls to the other. When when we look back at that, that playoff run, I think more than anything we'll marvel at the shifting roles of the pitchers, right? I mean, we're in such an era where pitching is specialized. Your starting pitcher, your middle reliever, your closer, though the bullpen stuff is changing a little bit. The way you guys were roving, whatever we want to call it, you know, how strange was that? for you, a guy who's been a starting pitcher. And, and I know you accepted it, whatever they needed, but it's still very unusual to sort of go day to day almost, waiting to see what your role is gonna be next. How different was that for you to go through over the course of a month? I mean, it was a long stretch. I think um, for me, <clears throat> the difference, what was, uh, what was an adjustment was pitching later in the ball game. I, I had pitched out of the bullpen several times when I was in Detroit and, and kind of knew what, what goes along with that. So that part of it wasn't, wasn't that foreign for me, but getting warmed up to, to go into the eighth inning against the Yankees and, and hand the ball over to Craig, that was something that was a little, <laughs> little different for me. Um, but I got to be honest, I absolutely loved it. And, uh, you know, as a starting pitcher, you only have that opportunity to contribute once every five days. And, and to be down in the bullpen and have a chance to go in that game every night, it, it keeps you even more engaged than you already are. And, and you know, the, the adrenaline and the excitement was <laughs> was a lot of fun. So, um, you know, that part of it was different. I think there were some things that I had been used to in the past, but overall, I, I absolutely loved it. And ultimately, um, you know, it helped us uh, win a World Series. And, and I, you know, you guys are such a band of brothers as pitchers, if you will. It, it almost looked, you talk about being engaged, like you guys were getting fired up when someone else did it, right? Watching Chris Sale come out of the bullpen. Yeah. Everybody seemed to get fired up. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever had as many goosebumps as I had in, in Dodger Stadium when he was running in to, to go pitch the ninth. And that, that was probably the first time because I can be superstitious, especially when it comes to our team winning games and leads and the game is still going on. That was honestly the first time my entire professional career that I like I knew we were going to get three outs and win the game. I mean, we had up by four runs. I don't think Chris Sale's ever given up four runs in one inning in his life. <laughs> And especially not uh, to clinch the World Series. So that, that feeling of watching him go in and the things that Nathan and, and David were doing out of the bullpen and Eddie and, and, and everyone, it was, it was a lot of fun and it was, it was inspiring. You know, I think we kind of each fed off each other with it. Take us into your mind in that ninth inning. First out, second out, <laughs> strike one, strike two. Like, you know, is it a blur? Do you kind of remember it moment by moment? What was going through your mind? The pitch, pitch by pitch was a blur because we're all up, you know, all of us down in the bullpen. We're kind of on the chain link fence down there in Dodger Stadium. And, uh, you know, Sale was throwing the heck out of the ball. So we were feeling pretty good about that. The, 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 my lasting memory is watching him punch out Machado. Machado kind of corkscrews into the ground and then and then just watching him raise his arms up and we were all running in doing the same thing and it was uh, it was an incredible feeling. So that's that's what I remember the most is that that final out and, and looking at him and just like And you're running towards him now. I yeah I thought over. I was flying but I was <laughs> <laughs> it actually took me like thirty seconds to get in there but it <laughs> yeah it was uh, Alex Cora was here a little while ago saying that he's excited that you're opening up on the West Coast, team can kind of come together, maybe get a little away from a little bit of the craziness, get your legs under you as a team trying to repeat. 
He also quickly mentioned that it might line up that you get to hit because you're out of the way, National League. Well, I mean, this thing kind of took on a life of its own last year. Didn't you? You, 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 you get the hit off Scherzer, and all of a sudden we got hitters on the show saying they're willing to give up their spot in the lineup for you. Is that the most attention you've ever got for a non-pitching part of your game? Absolutely. Those are the most hits I've ever gotten. So, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really know what to think about it because – when I saw AC over the offseason, he wasn't uh, talking about my first start of the year. He was lining me up for my first start against the, you know, the National League. And um, no, but you know, I got I got in a nice groove last year. Got lucky, got a couple knocks. It was fun, but uh, you know, <laughs> we'll see what happens. When he puts you in the bat, it would be like fifth in the lineup or something. Then you got to know that it's taken on a life of its own. <laughs> yeah, that's a little much. Right. I think uh, we got a pretty good lineup without. Uh, uh, How about the wear and tear on you? You know, that extra month, you're obviously throwing a lot of high leverage, you know, intense pitches. Uh, what will that mean to your spring training preparation this year? Is that something you've talked about, a plan uh, that you started to put in place? Yeah. Um, First off, it's just another example of how great our coaching staff is with all the way down from AC to, to Dana Levangie and our training staff. And they had all had already gotten together and, and kind of prepared programs for all of our, you know, our, our starting pitchers and relievers on what our workload was this past year and, and kind of our game plan going into spring training and how we were going to taper our buildup. And it was, you know, we, we started doing it last year. And this year we played even even deeper. So it's a little bit more pushed back. But um you know, Dana had pretty much every day that I was going to be throwing from now until the end of spring training already mapped out. He had my throwing program mapped out, told me exactly when I was going to be pitching. And, um, you know, that's that's part of the reason why everyone loves coming to the ballpark every day is because our coaching staff, everyone in the front office, they're all prepared and, and working as hard as they possibly can to give us, you know, the necessary things to go out and win. And, um that was, uh, you know, what we had talked about, I guess the difference would be just to kind of push the throwing program back two to three weeks. So I'll follow what Dana and, and Brad Pearson, our head trainer, have and, and just, you know, stay on that game plan.